we are welcoming someone very special to the Beat London today. He's come all the way from Manny. Nems is in the building. What do you say, my come brother? On, bro. You I good? appreciate you for having me, bro. No, we appreciate you, to be honest, because I know you're, you're, I'd say, one of the hottest names in the UK right now. So we appreciate you giving us Thank the you, time. Bro. And immediately, I'm going to jump in. You're from Gorton yeah. in Manchester. Am I mm-hmm. right? Now, I did a quick Google search, and the immediate thing which pops up is the most famous landmark there is Gorton Monastery. Mm-hmm. I'm not concerned with that. I don't want to hear about Gorton Monastery. Mm. All respect to Gorton Monastery. But if we were going to talk about you, what does Nemz's Gorton look like? If you had to pick a couple of places in Gorton. A couple which of just... places. I'd say Mount Road, probably. That's like the Betis Road there. I'd say the Premier there as well. There's this place called Debdale Park. Debdale that's Park. Place that's what goes like... down at Debdale Park? Bro, it's just vibes, isn't it? Like, in summer, this is, this is when I was like, 13, 14 times like people just used to go there dive in the lake and that the reservoir sorry and just chill bro everyone used to just vibe there like I can't lie wait there's a lake the reservoir yeah there's a reservoir there what am I doing in West London <laughs> what, am I, what are we doing with our lives so we get too sucked into the sea so sorry go back people are just in the summertime just swimming yeah they'd be diving in I wasn't personally one of them people because I, I just hygiene and that innit you get me bro but <laughs> but yeah people used to dive in you got your speakers and that girl man them everyone just link up but wait, talk to me. Why, why, why hygiene? So talk me. Bro, okay, you don't know what's in there. Bro. <laughs> don't know what's in there, fam. It could be anything, bro. I'm hearing someone died, someone threw a body in there, like yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. hygiene, it, bro, and people be throwing rubbish in there, like yeah, not for me, bro. This conversation started with me being en- <laughs> envious and jealous of the reservoir, but now they were yeah, talking about nah, dead bodies at the, dead bodies at the bottom. I wouldn't recommend that one, bro. <laughs> Trust me. I um, is it somewhere you're really proud to be from? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, cause I feel like not a lot of people, not a lot of people make it out of there, innit? So to be to be able to actually reach a certain goal and reach a certain place, yeah, it's just like I look back and f- hopefully people look at it as motivation that they can do it as well. I think let's be honest, man, it's already motivation. Like we've got, we've all got high hopes for you. We know you're mm. gonna go right to the very top, but you've already made it out. Mm. You're re- people are already looking at you, and people want to be the next Nems. So Appreciate that, congrats bro. for that. I've got a quote here. Mm-hmm. from 2021 hit me hit one of your me. tracks is a lyric yeah call me Mr. D&D more time I abuse it so this has been going on for a long while it's yeah not that it's like been a minute yet. it's not it's not yesterday <laughs> it's not last week it's so, been a sec bro I want to know immediately there's clearly a backstory to this so you're calling your 2024 mixtape Do Not Disturb mm-hmm. but you've been quoting it three years ago mm-hmm. talk us through Do Not Disturb so basically bro like as as obvious as it sounds I don't pick up the phone do you know what I mean? I'm not really like I'm not very my communication is terrible, bro. With all all my friends, family, like it's just terrible and it's always been like that. And obviously I'm more introverted anyway, so I like my own space in it. Like I don't like necessarily communicating people a lot. Like I'm not against it. I'm not like shutting myself off from the world, but I just I just rather not in it. So ever since twenty twenty it's from even before twenty twenty one, even school times, like people used to always try to get through to me and they just couldn't. Do you get what I mean? Even before I had my phone on D and D so these times I just thought I thought of it while I was writing a song in it and I thought I might as well just give myself that name establish it fully because I'm really like that like I'm not trying to force anything you get me it's kind of crazy because we're all so used to instantly being able to contact people in mm-hmm. this day and age do you do you almost like like you said you're a bit more introverted you're mm-hmm. on your own personal space this was by design from when you were younger yeah Why? Like, not to I get too psychological you know what it is like do? I don't I don't do it on purpose in it like I just I just don't be realising, bro. Like, sometimes I'm focused on myself or I'll just be doing something else and I just won't be able to get to the phone. But when I do see it, I might call you back if you're important. <laughs> do you get what I mean? But if not, <laughs> that's it. So Send here's a question. Mail, bro. Here's a question. I like that because you touched on my next point, which mm-hmm. is, if you're important, I'll shout you. Mm-hmm. Who, if you had to be disturbed, who or what in your life is allowed to disturb you? My mum. Your mum. My dad. My little sisters. They're the top three. They're the top four ranking. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously my friends, the the close circle. You get me? They can't get through to me. But everyone else, bro, <laughs> can't. They ain't hearing me, man. Straight voicemail. <laughs> Straight voicemail. So what? Listen, man. What if I was like, I wanted to invite you to a party in West London or something? You're you're airing me. I'm not in that close circle. Nah, my manager will see that. Listen, you're you're, you're smart. You're getting. You're getting <laughs> <laughs> my manager will see that. He'll hit me. <laughs> I love that, bro. And I oh yeah, it. I forgot. I forgot to include on my manager. Obviously, you can get in contact with me. Cause I favorite. I favorite the people in it who are the most important and the people I frequently contact. You get Listen, me? Listen, manager. We well, got a name. What's the name? Alex. Alex. Please don't be offended. Like <laughs> it was the immediate thing that that Nem's thought of. Immediately, it was that like, Alex, my manager, will deal with this. Please. But 
that's the D&D side. That's the kind of, not the jokey side, that's the kind of backstory behind the mm-hmm. name. But you've elevated in this scene ridiculously just from singles alone. Mm-hmm. What's the name's mixtape going to look like compared to just singles? It's going to be more like touching on topics. You're going to be able to get to know me more. You're going to be able to relate to a lot more things as I'm touching on different topics. And yeah, it's just more, it's more thought has gone into this because like, I wouldn't say no thought has gone into my other singles, but it's, it's natural, isn't it? It's very natural. It's easier for me to just make a song nowadays and just know what targets to hit, target audience to hit, sorry, and just the people to hit in general, innit? Mm. And just how to be able to re- be received well. But this is just a lot more thought and just a lot more time has gone into it. How have you found thinking about it? So obviously you've probably got a big team around mm. you and stuff like that, producers. You know what's crazy? I don't even have a big team, bro. It's just me, my manager, marketer, and then Zal, my producer. Is it? So you got one producer, what was his name, sorry? Zal. Zal? Zal, yeah, he's produced every song on the Every tape. single track every you've single ever made. Song. And then I got my team ADA as well. I have big up everyone at ADA. I love that, you know. You're keeping the keeping the circle real. So if Zell called, you're not in the ND. Nah. No way. That's nah, impossible. D&D. Never. <laughs> never. Never. So how was it for the first time ever? Like you said, looking at things from almost like a high level. You're looking at a project now. Was there any things during the process which you weren't used to doing? So like you were like, oh, track four and mm. five don't really match together and stuff like that. Talk me through one of the kind of unique stories from building I'd the say, tape. I'd say like the hardest thing probably like that I've just, I think I'm overcoming it now is just the topics. Because usually I'd like, everything would be very based on one topic. Like I'd try to write about something and it just go off into certain else. But all these songs are specific topics. You can listen to the song and after you'd be like, it's about this. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. I love that man listen and I've become I've started associating you with just and Zell of course clearly Mm -hmm. is helping you with this is we've had such a let's call it sample pandemic Mm -hmm. in UK rap I'm going to call it that Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name any names of artists I'm not going to name producers but with your tracks here and we know in the music industry everyone uses samples it's Mm -hmm. it's historic you use samples Mm -hmm. you've done them so beautifully like it's been ridiculous and congratulations to that like for example Elevate you use PND's Persian Rugs Mm -hmm. You've used Justin Timberlake's Rock Your Body. I want to know, because there's a lot of label stuff in the background. Mm-hmm. If you could get any song cleared for a sample, any song in the world, what song would you choose? That's a good one, you know. Thank, um, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, but Heartbreak. <laughs> yeah, but Heartbreak, yeah, Drake. Heartbreak. Yeah, yeah, that's cold. That's cold. That would be such a that's sick cold. sample. Yeah, that's, that's probably one of my favourite songs, because you know what it is, bro? Like A lot of the samples, I don't listen to, the, listen to a song and think, oh, I need the sample to go viral. I actually generally listen to the song. So like Justin Timberlake, Rock Your Body, there was a cover, a female singer done a cover of it. And I used to listen to it all the time. And then it was in the studio. I'm like, yo, put this on it because I like it. Do you get what I mean? It's more of a like, oh, I really like it. This will sound good together. Let's do it. No, but you're a musician's musician. Do you get what no, I'm no, saying? No, no, it's, it's clear. And I think it immediately you can smell that. That's my mm-hmm. point is, and you're seeing a lot of like, not just UK music. In the mm-hmm. US, you're just seeing people sample stuff mm. needlessly. You're trying yeah. to sample it to get ahead. Yeah. Whereas you're actually sampling because you like the tracks. I but literally just like it. Congrats yeah. to Zell as well, because obviously he's making the beats as well, right? Yeah, come on. Big up Zell, man. <laughs> big up Zell. We're the same age as well, man. We're coming up together. Come on. That's what I love to coming hear, man. Together. So you had, so Yeba's Heartbreak. Mm-hmm. I think the vocal in that, the female vocal would sound so nice but I, I think you they you raised the tone in rock your body on jt's yeah, yeah, voice yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah yeah, yeah. for i'm uh, not in because no it wasn't it wasn't his it wasn't his actual vocal it was, it was a, a female, female vocal female, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, let me not try i was about to <laughs> 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 i was about to kick off and start doing something mad there i am um, what would look like a success to you at the end of dnd like what's so you probably have plans with your managers with mm-hmm. alex with zell you guys have talked about this so much for you to be internally happy at the end of this, 15th of March, mm-hmm. let's say even 15th of April, a month into the tape, being mm-hmm. out in the world, what would look like success to you? To be honest, bro, like, I'm not I'm not too sure as far as success, but what will make me happier is just seeing that people are impressed. Because every time I make a song, I just try and impress myself. Mm. And I feel like that's, that's why things keep progressing this, the way they're progressing, because I don't really think, oh, I need to go viral. I need to make this song to get into this place. It's more of like, if I can do better each time, then I know everyone will like it. Do you get what I mean? I hear that. So it's essentially just me versus me, bro. Have there ever been any pieces of art that you've put out where you've loved it and mm-hmm. the reaction hasn't been as you'd expected? Nah, you know. <laughs> you nah, just want, bro, you're 10 nah. for 10, 11 10, for 11. Bro, it's going well, man. Going That's well. such a sick thing to hear, man. I love that. And I've seen in previous interviews, mm-hmm. so it's funny you mentioned you have as a heartbreak. You've spoken about Drake Mm -hmm. and you said one of the proudest moments in your career Mm -hmm. was when Drake followed you Mm -hmm. on the gram. Talk to me a bit about the the admiration of Drake 
and but, yeah. what he means to you as an artist. You know what it is that it just I was at a point I was at a point when it happened. Obviously, I dropped I dropped my first single of the year last year, and it was like a weird space because it was like after Two M's came out, I felt like things were starting to go a bit down because I was losing focus. I was kind of getting distracted because you got to bear in mind seventeen getting all that money at once it's crazy what kind of things were making you lose focus it's just like obviously now I've got access to more things like more people are giving man attention and I didn't necessarily know how to deal with it at that point innit I've always had attention but when you have money bro and you're in the spotlight as well it's crazy innit you don't know what's right from wrong so I kind of had to learn for myself sort of trial and error and then after I came past that I started realising obviously I need to pick this back up get back onto what I'm doing came to way too late and when I dropped that I didn't know how it would do so when he hit me up and was like, yeah, this is hard, he kind of gave me that motivation, you get what I mean? It really like spurred you on motivation. it, it spurred you on again, you yeah, got a second yeah. wind, you're like, yo, I'm I'm really about this, I knew I was about this. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny? Let's talk about that idea of being young, rich and famous. Mm-hmm. Not many people can relate. That's what I'm saying. Not many people can relate. How, like, what would you advise other people? Because you're, you're one of the select few who's a teenager who is making racks. I'd say, I'd say just have the right people around you, innit? And just know yourself and don't lose yourself. And it's very easy to forget who you are when you when you got access to certain things. And I say, just stay true to yourself. Have a good team around you, and get a, and get an accountant. <laughs> get an accountant. <laughs> get an accountant. In it. Get a good accountant. Literally. Because listen, listen. We've we've always said this on the Drive Time Show, and I've always said a lot of people can make rice, mm. but not everyone can make that rice where every little grain is dropping down. You exactly. know, like the auntie rice on it's Sundays. Facts. It's facts. Not everyone can make that rice. <laughs> the same, I believe, is true for mm. a lot of things, but specifically accountants. Right? No, it's facts. A lot of people, a lot of people can crunch numbers. but It's easy to make money, but it's not easy to keep it and maintain no, no. it, for real. Listen, this is fantastic advice. And last question <laughs> of the interview. Yeah, we're closing up. I've had a lot of people ask me, obviously, like I said, you're famously from Manchester. Mm. We asked you at the beginning of the interview. No one knows what football team you support. Is, Manche- it pub- is it public red. knowledge? Can I say... Manchester's red, bro. You say Manchester is like Pro Evo there. Well, I, let me tell you something, because I saw some content. We were mm-hmm. doing some research behind the scenes, mm-hmm. and you were getting interviewed about like United and City players. Mm-hmm. I, I think you might remember mm-hmm. it. But then it didn't look, sound like you were a United fan. United or maybe you were just being mad objective. Maybe it's because City are much better yeah, than Yeah, yeah. Now, you know what it is? I got, I got friends at City, in it, and obviously, it's, in, it's undeniable. City just be always winning, bro. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to push that to the side, innit? But at the end of the day, I'm a United fan, bro. You're a United fan? United fan, and straight. nothing can budge that. You're a proper United fan. United fan. Big, so, up, big up my friends at City, though. I got some friends who play there. But, yeah. Uh, can you name names? Rico, Nico, and then I think it's either Nico or Michael who just went pro. Yeah. They just went pro just recently, but big up them. No, well done, man. And I want a final question. Still football. Who's the best player at Man United right now? No, bro. <laughs> that is, I can see oh, the sadness. I know, I know. Um, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. G- Ganacho. Ganacho. Ganacho, yeah, yeah. He's, he's moving warm You are right saying now. his name very right. He's moving warm right now, bro. And I think a lot of people would agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, he's moving warm. Listen, Nems, I've got big hopes for this mixtape, man. We've Thank enjoyed you, the bro. singles so far. I'm excited. Listen, I've got 15th of March circled on my <laughs> calendar. Thanks <laughs> a lot for coming through. And anytime you want to come through to drive time again. Mm-hmm. Listen, actually, we're bringing the show to Manchester next time. I've got yeah, a whip. Let's do I, can, it, I can come through to Manny. Let's do We're it, doing bro. an interview inside Gorton Monastery. If mm. they give us permission, you know. I don't want to go there though, bro. It's dead, man. <laughs> Where would we do it? It's dead. I can't. Mount, I... Mount Street, Mount Road. Mount Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mount, Mount Road, Road yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that.